Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content process and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is content management, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been a leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll review the importance of documenting the way your information and interactions with it flow and capturing metrics all along. After all the labeling you did during your content inventory, you next want to record where the content you are inventorying goes when it's in use, what and who interacts with it, and what and who interacts around it afterwards. An example may help to make this more clear. Imagine a sales manager's end of quarter report. Working with her team, she consolidates her group's results and forecasts into a single document and sends it to her boss who then consolidates it with his other financials to pass further upstairs. That's the easy part to discern. What's harder is identifying everything and every one the document touches and is touched by before it eventually comes to rest in a directory somewhere, hopefully with good metadata attached so it can be found again later if need be. These may include contributors, editors, and approvers of the document, emails or other communications that it references or that reference it, other documents, by virtue of links it may contain to the contracts, let's say, or links to it in other summary materials, and other information systems, which may extract and leverage the content for other forms of analysis and decision support. Reconstructing how, where, and in what order information has flowed, and what happened to it along the way, is akin to charting ice flows in the Arctic, because you're dealing with chunks of material moving in seemingly random directions, encountering seemingly random objects, but actually traveling according to some unseen plan. Understanding that plan is central to your ability to manage it. Metrics are also key, for they provide the specifics you need to make sound decisions about your information management. System logs, email stamps, and file properties are simple and readily accessible sources of usage data that can tell you much about what happened when and who was involved as it relates to information flow. Other metrics worth capturing include the number of information assets in use in each of the categories you identified at the outset, the number of information types you're dealing with, how often they're accessed and how many times the same people or systems access them, the number of people or systems that touch it overall, the time it takes for a document to move from point A to point B, and how long and where it may sit while waiting for attention. To recap, the tasks we talked about in this module involve documenting the way your information and interactions with it flow and capturing metrics throughout. With this information now in your tool belt, you may next wish to review the section on collaboration and delivery. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org certification. Thank you.